All right. First, I'm going to start off with um, this scripture from Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. I believe the time is at hand and that is why God is showing us um, these prophecies that will come to pass shortly. So last night's dream was about um, the four horsemen. I only saw two out of the four and I believe that the horseman represents the Antichrist um, that will be released to rule and reign the earth with terror death and destruction as um, Bible prophecy teaches for thousands of years and we are the generation the time is at hand we are the generation that will see these things come to pass what month day I do not I do not know you know it could happen very soon it could happen next year or the year after I do not know but let me go straight to my notes because I have a lot dream july 24th 2020 please take it to the lord test all spirits search the scripture seek god for his heart and counsel um we know in parts and prophesied in parts there are no perfect vessels amen um just those that are listening and willing to obey and i in my obedience this is why i'm sharing it to wake up as many people as possible so that they would have the opportunity to be warned, to be reconciled, and get right with the Lord. Amen. That's what it's all about. I woke up around this time, around 5 a.m., and began praying and studying about the four horsemen of Revelation to understand more and to seek God for wisdom and confirmation. I believe this dream is a warning from the Lord to prepare us of things that will shortly come to pass. We know in parts and prophesy in parts, so I do not understand everything or remember every details of the dreams, but there is a lot more to what I am sharing. I just can't remember it um, specifically, clearly enough to share. The dream is from the book of Revelation 6 and Matthew 24. The dream is about Jesus, and he will surely come at his appointed time. And it's about the four horsemen in Revelation 6. I believe the horseman represents what I believe is the Antichrist that God will release and allow to rule and reign for a short hellish moment on earth to bring upon his righteous judgments upon the entire world that has rejected and rebelled against him and his father, the living creator God and king of both heaven, earth, and hell. This dream is also a warning of the famine, food shortages, death, and destruction coming as scriptures prophesied i dreamed that i saw jesus in his white robe and a blue sash appeared in the skies jesus had a short beard and shoulder length hair right above the shoulder he had got me all right so many little bugs here he had a gentle face and i saw about three different scenes at the same time of jesus one scene i believe he was inside a church i want to say that the church looked like the vatican i'm like what is jesus doing with the pope at the vatican but now i understand it more as i pondered and prayed and studied for a few hours i believe it means that um when the antichrist is released um uh, the false um the satan the dragon will give him the power to rule and reign and It'll be through the Vatican's, the Pope, um, the false prophet, that Jesus will throw into the lake of fire in the end. All right, so let me get back. Hmm, where am I at? Okay. Then I saw Jesus, I believe he was inside a house, and there was a third scene of Jesus appearing in the clouds. It was a bright, clear, sunny day when I saw Jesus in the skies and my heart was overflowing with sheer joy that I cannot fully describe. After I saw these images or visions of Jesus in the skies, I went and told everyone on my path with sheer excitement and urgency that Jesus is coming. In my heart, I had no greater goals or urgency 
but to tell people that Jesus is coming and to make sure they are ready. Then at a different scene, I was inside a small building, perhaps a small church or a home church or something with a few people and they were believers. I saw one of my former bestest friend whom I haven't seen in a few years or talked to except a message through messenger months ago. I saw that she was zealously trying to minister and get this woman saved. But the woman was demon possessed and very evil. Her face was um, demonic, evil, possessed. I was concerned for my friend who was going off alone with this evil demon spirit possessed woman whom I felt was going to do her harm. And I didn't believe that my friend had the power and knowledge to cast out demons and overcome the demons. You know, not, not every professed Christian walks in the authority to cast out demons. You know, th there are stories um, when the father brought the uh, child with the deaf and dumb spirit to the disciples and they could not cast him out. Um, and basically they had to wait until Jesus came and Jesus was able to cast out that dumb and deaf spirit out so it takes a certain um anointing maturity to cast out demons so knowing my friend and her belief and theology and all of that i knew that she did not have the authority and the power to cast out uh, the demons in that woman so i was concerned for her so before she went off i asked if i could pray for her so a small group of us ladies held hands and began the prayers but a few words into our prayers, I couldn't pray because my heart was deeply moved with grief and I cried up pleading, I cried out pleading and begging God for his mercy. I wept and wailed with a broken heart. Father, please, please, Lord, save them. Save them, please don't let them perish. Please save them, Father. I was weeping in bitter tears over those who rejects Christ and refuse to believe and surrender their lives to him. Faces of close family members with hard hearts toward God raced through my mind, and I was weeping and begging Father to please save them before Jesus comes. I knew that they would perish and would be tormented in the fires of hell for an eternity if they did not repent and come to Christ before he came. Then in another scene, I was also outside again, and I was looking upward towards the skies, and once, I, once more I saw three scenes of Jesus Christ across the skies. He was in his white robes and blue sash, and each scene he was at different places, like someone's home or inside a church, a temple. Again, it looked like the scene of the Vatican, the Pope, um, and Jesus was there with a lot of people, and it looked like he was um, talking to them. I don't know, um, but that's what I saw. And I can't remember clearly the third scene where he was at, but each scene he was not alone. He was with a group of people like he was speaking to them. Maybe he was teaching them about the kingdom of God. I do not know. In Jesus' life when he was walking, um, you know, on the earth, that's what he did. He went to synagogues, he went preaching, teaching, um, anywhere and everywhere. Amen. And those who follow him are doing the same thing. Um, taking this gospel out to the uttermost parts of the earth. All right. Then immediately following these three scenes out of the clouds, the skies bolted out a white horse with a rider on it. The rider seemingly had on a white robe, but it was not Jesus. This rider on the white horse was evil. The rider's face was covered in a black mask of some sort. His hands were covered in black. Don't know if he had black gloves on. It looked like he had black gloves on. I don't know, but it was black or not, but they were black. And out of his hands, he released something that looked like grains of wheat or rice across the skies and it was white. In my dream, I immediately felt that famine was coming. And then the more I thought about this scene right here, I realized that um, the Antichrist will come like a savior. He's going to appear like the savior, offer food, you know, offer anything and everything that um, the world needs. He's going to come as a, 
you know, a light, but he's actually very wicked and evil, and he's going to bring um, death, destruction, deception, disease, war, famines, um, um, genocide. Uh, there will be a lot of bloodshed um, through his hands because he's evil. He's not the Christ, our Jesus Christ, who is coming on a white horse with his holy angels and the saints bolting out of heaven. Uh, in Revelation 19 when I had that dream I was filled with sheer excitement and joy and so were the holy saints uh, that was accompanying him on their white horses bolting out of heaven it was such a, a huge vast difference my emotion seeing this um, white horse bolting out of heaven with the rider with the black mask and black uh, hands bolting out of heaven last night and the dream that the Lord gave me four plus years ago when Jesus Christ himself with his holy armies of heaven bolted out of heaven. Huge difference. So I know the difference between good and evil. Amen. I would know if he was my Lord or not. All right. Where am I at? Then I saw a second horse bolted out of the clouds as well. I cannot remember vividly what color that horse and rider was. My guess was it was either pale or reddish but I'm uncertain because I was too caught up with the first white horseman. I believe I went ev evangelizing with great urgency after I witnessed all this. I told my two oldest sons, Nana, I told her that the horsemen will be released and famine is coming. And I felt at peace because I knew that she and the family have been preparing for years so they are in good hands and they believe and trust in the Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Nana's daddy, a great mighty man of God, Papa Barker, taught revelation for decades. So they are aware and prepared. And I felt at peace knowing my two oldest sons, Jaden and Micah, are with them. After I told Nana, I went off to tell the world, anyone who would listen, to prepare and be ready because Jesus is coming and his judgments upon the world through the four horsemen will be released shortly. So. Please, please, please get right with God and be reconciled to Him through Christ now while you have time. This is my heart every day to everybody, including myself. I repent for everything under the sun that I can think of. Um, I don't get away with nothing, nothing at all. The Lord does not allow me to get away with anything. My heart was filled with intense passion to get the law saved and consumed with great zeal and urgency to evangelize the gospel of the kingdom of God that Jesus taught. The gospel of Jesus Christ that he taught is this, found in many places, but here's one that I cite often, Luke 24, 46 to 48. And he told them, this is what is written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And in his name, repentance and forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed to all nations beginning in Jerusalem you are witnesses of these things if we have repented and received the gift of the Holy Ghost we are witnesses of these things and the things to come that God is revealing to us by the Holy Ghost amen hallelujah so all must repent to be forgiven of sins and to receive the gift of God's Holy Spirit the spirit of truth that reveals all things to come to his children. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ, repentance and remissions of sins. In my studies early this morning, I found this article written by Dr. David Jeremiah on crosswalk.com that helps simplify the purpose and meanings of the four horsemen to help us learn better and understand the word will of God, the things that will be accomplished shortly. God watches over his word to perform it. So it will be accomplished. What month, year, or day, I do not know, but it is coming very soon. The Antichrist will be released to rule and reign for a short time. I believe that's what the white horseman I saw in this dream meant. So here's what Dr. Jeremiah wrote. In Revelation 6, Jesus opens seven seals of judgment to begin the tribulation period on earth. The first four seals he opens are the four horsemen and each is released from heaven to usher in various judgments on the earth. This is why 
the four horsemen are being released from heaven by God to execute righteous judgments on the earth. All right. While some apocalyptic judgments are specific events, these are overarching judgments that will last for periods throughout the tribulation. Here's a look at each symbol individually. All right. The white horse, the white horse, and I looked and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. Revelation 6 2. I didn't see a bow on um, the white horseman uh, that I was shown in a dream last night, but I believe the crown means power, authority. He was given authority to make war, to conquer. The rider on the white horse is the Antichrist. He will arrive on the world scene at the beginning of the tribulation and work to unite the nations through the Vatican's, through the Pope. That's why he was in the dream. Um, this is my understanding. And um, the Pope, the Vatican, the dragon, the spirit of the devil will empower the Antichrist to do all his wicked, wor wicked work and um, to unite the uh, entire world, to have a one world government, one world religion. All right, let me back up. He will arrive on the world scene at the beginning of the tribulation and work to unite the nation, signing a peace treaty with Israel. He will be a charismatic leader that presents himself as the savior of the world. That's why he comes um, on a white horse wearing a white robe, but he's evil. His face, his hands, everything about him that he will give, that he will present, that he will distribute to the world will be death and destruction and evil all right his power and authority will come from the dragon satan and like satan he is a great deceiver the symbol of him on a white horse aptly illustrates this quality then for jesus returns to earth on a white horse revelation 19 verse 11 through 14 satan's purpose has always been to counterfeit the work of christ by the second half of the tribulation, the Antichrist will break his peace treaty and wage open war against believers. The red horse, another horse, fiery red, went out and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword, Revelation 6.4. The next horseman, the red horse, represents war and bloodshed. Nation will rise against nation during the tribulation and individuals against each other. This is when we'll be betrayed by those in our household and there'll be wars. All right. It is a time of murder, assassination, bloodshed, revolution, and war. The black horse. So I looked and behold a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scale in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the vine, the wine. Revelation 6, 5, 6. All right. So what I saw that was released out of the Antichrist's hands looked like white grains um could be white rice or wheat that's what i saw so he was offering food solution to the world during a time of famine all right black is often connected with famine in the bible and food sh shortage is a typical byproduct of the war that will be happening a denarius was the standard daily wage for ancient laborers in the early days of the tribulation period, food will be in short supply. People will have to work all day just to get enough food to eat. Yet the luxuries of the wealthy, oil and wine, will remain untouched. I'm not sure if I understand that. I need more understanding on that. The famine will provide the way for the Antichrist rule. Later in, tri in the tribulation, he will require the people to take his mark in order to buy or sell hunger will play into his hands and strengthen his control the pale horse 
So I looked and behold a pale horse and the name of him who sat on it was Death and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death and by the beast of the earth. Revelation 6, 8. One fourth of mankind of humanity will be destroyed. It'll be a horrific time. Death is the pale rider with Hades, means hell, following behind. They will kill with the sword, hunger, diseases, and wild beasts. The four judgments the Lord said he would send in Ezekiel 14.21, death and Hades are mentioned together three times in Revelation. And the first time is Revelation 1.18 tells us that Christ holds the keys to death and Hades, though the companions will wreak havoc, havoc during the tribulation. Jesus holds ultimate power and will throw them both into the lake of fire after the battle of